Have you ever had this problem? You spend hours making a nice model in Blender. You unwrap the model and texture it. You set up a little backdrop for the scene. You light it, hit render, and it looks bad. Really bad. It's certainly happened to me before. In fact, this is my first ever Blender project from 2017. I often see other people posting really nice models online that are let down just by the presentation of the scene. So today I want to show you how I would take this exact scene and significantly improve it with just a few minutes of extra work. Before we get started, I just want to briefly say that my new course, the Exterior Masterclass, is now available and you can save 20% off at Gumroad using the promo code LAUNCH. More on that later. So the first thing I would do to this scene is to change the lighting. Reducing the beam size of an aerial light will put more focus onto the objects and moving the light to the side slightly will make the shapes pop out more by adding a sense of depth through the shadows. You almost never want to light objects directly from the front. You always want to have the light coming from the side so that you can actually see the shadows and get an idea that this is a three dimensional shape. You can also add a differently colored light from the opposite direction, which will make the shapes pop out even more from the backdrop. I have a whole video all about lighting fundamentals if you're interested in learning more about that. Secondly, reflective surfaces such as glass and metal are all about reflections. So adding a low strength HDR image to the background is a great way to add some visual interest to the reflections and it'll make everything look a little bit less fake. I use this free add-on called Easy HDRI to cycle through my library of background images and find something that I like. As you can see, this immediately makes things look more realistic. The next problem that we have with this scene is the fact that it's just so damn boring. It's basically just two assets on a plain background viewed straight head on. Who wants to look at that? Most product photography uses a long focal length of 50 to 100 millimeters on the camera. I'm going to set this camera to 80 millimeters and then I'm going to actually move it so we get a better view of the assets. Then I'm just going to play around with the positioning to make this look a little bit more natural. You never want to have all your objects perfectly lined up. I'm also going to duplicate the can and I'm going to move it onto its side and then I'm going to put this in the background of the image once again just to add a little bit more visual interest so there's actually something to look at. That plain white photography style backdrop isn't doing this scene any favors so I've deleted it. We'll have to come up with something a little bit more interesting so let's try adding a cube, elongating it out and then go into edit mode. I'll delete the bottom face and then we will have to UV unwrap this later on so what I'll do is just select all four of the corners with Control, Alt and click, which will select all of them at the same time and I'll mark those as UV seams. Then back in object mode, I'll add an array modifier, which will turn this cube into planks of wood that the other assets can sit on top of. If I can add a texture, which has some sort of messy flaking paint on the wood, it'll really add a lot of visual interest to the scene. So I just have to apply the array, unwrap everything, and then load in a PBR texture set of some flaking paint. Once the UV islands are all flipped into the right orientation and everything is scaled correctly, we can already see that this shot is looking much better. The PBR texture set that I'll use has a displacement texture. To take advantage of this, I'll need to go into the material settings and change the mode to displacement only. The planks don't have enough geometry to actually be displaced at the moment. So what I'll have to do is go into the render settings and change Blender's feature set to the experimental mode. Then I'll add a subdivision surface modifier. Turning on experimental mode gives us this option for adaptive subdivision, which triangulates the mesh based on the proximity of that part of the mesh to the camera. Basically, it allows very simple meshes like this to have high levels of displacement detail. The materials for the glass and the coke can also need a little bit of love. To make the glass look like it's covered in a layer of condensation because it's cold, we only have to increase the roughness on the glass. Now condensation is rarely uniform, so I'll use a noise texture to control the amount and add a little bit of randomness. Adding a color ramp in between the noise node and the glass node allows for a little bit of finer control. 
then it's just a case of playing with the settings to find something that looks good. At the moment the condensation is covering the whole glass, but it shouldn't really appear very strongly above the liquid line because that part of the glass won't be as cold. I'll add a gradient texture to the node network as a mask. Once again we can fine tune this with a colour ramp. If we set the colour ramp to ease mode we'll get a more gradual gradient. I'll add a dark colour to a mixed colour node and I'll use that mask as the factor. The noise node from earlier is going to go in the bottom slot. Changing this to add mode will allow the noise to only appear at the bottom part of the gradient. Next let's take a look at the can material. Firstly the material while it is metallic is paint at the end of the day not pure metal so I'll lower the metallic value just slightly. This texture that I used is also a little bit too bright for my liking so I'll use the hue saturation node just to lower the value of the texture a little bit and darken it down. Then it'll just be a case of copy and pasting the noise nodes from the glass material which I can reuse for the can. I will have to play around with the values a little bit because obviously the glass is a little bit less rough than the metal can would be. The assets in this shot are still not popping out as much as I'd like. I'll bring the focus back onto them by going into the camera settings and enabling depth of field. Using the eyedropper I'm going to select the ring pull of the main can as the focal object. The depth of field tab has a few more settings that you don't really need to worry about. One that I am going to adjust here though is the ratio number which basically just changes the shape or the direction of the blur. Numbers between 1 and 2 will stretch the out of focus areas vertically while numbers between 0 and 1 will stretch it horizontally. I'm going to use a ratio of 0 0.7 which looks pretty good to me. As I mentioned earlier I have a new course available called the Exterior Masterclass dedicated to making beautiful exterior scenes in Blender. Module 1 is about 6.5 hours long and it covers the full creation process for this colonial American style house. Other modules covering various different styles of exteriors will be added in the future and if you buy the course now you will get all those updates for free. You can save 20% with the code LAUNCH at checkout on Gumroad. Alternatively it is also available on Blender Market if you prefer to buy things there. You'll find all of the relevant information in the description including all the discount codes for my other courses as well. I think this scene would really benefit from some actual liquid condensation built up on the side of the can and the glass. To make this I'll move the 3D cursor way below the scene and I'll add a meta ball. Now meta balls look like regular spheres but they actually merge together into one object when they get close enough like droplets of water collecting on the side of a surface. So I'm going to flatten out this meta ball until it's roughly in the shape of a droplet of water and then selecting the can I'll add a new particle system and I'll change the type to hair. I reduce the number of particles for now and enable advanced mode. Under the render tab I'll change the render type to object and I'll select the meta ball that we just made as the emitted object. The scale of the particles is affected by the scale of the meta ball so I'll have to shrink that down. I can improve the look of these particles by selecting the meta ball and reducing the resolution size. Being careful not to go too small with it otherwise it can and did crash blender. All of these particles are obviously facing the wrong direction right now which can easily be corrected just by enabling the rotation controls and changing the vector type to normal. I'll give the meta ball itself a glass material with low roughness and an IOR of 1.33 which should make it look like droplets of water. I don't want any of these large droplets on the top of the can so what I'm going to do is select only the sides of the can in edit mode and I'll add this selection to a new vertex group. Then back in the particle settings I can change the density control of these particles to abide by that vertex group which will keep the large droplets from being applied to the top. So now we need to add a little bit of more natural variation. I can do this by playing with the scale randomness which will basically just change the size of all the particles. 
I can also change the distribution type to random, which will scatter the particles a little bit more radically. Disabling even distribution will place more of the particle on the densest parts of the mesh. In this case, that's at the top, which could look good in some circumstances, but I'm going to leave that enabled. Now I want to add some smaller beads of liquid on the surface of the can. To do this, I'm just going to add a regular sphere into the scene with the same material as the metaball, and I'll use another particle system to scatter it all over the surface in the exact same way. The only difference this time is I won't be using a vertex group to limit where the particles can go because I want these smaller ones all over the top of the can as well. I obviously need to add these particle systems to the other objects in the scene. I don't want to do that manually, there's a much easier way. All I have to do is select the object I want to add the particles to, uh, shift select the main can, and then if we use Control and L, we'll have an option to copy all of the modifiers from the main can to the other can, which will copy over the particle system as well. Then I just need to do the same thing for the glass. There's really no reason for the glass to be so cold right now. To justify all that condensation, I think I need to add some ice cubes. So I'll add a cube into the scene and bevel off the edges just to smooth it out a little bit. Then I'm going to add a remesh modifier, which will give us some nice even geometry. I'll have to make sure that I enable smooth shading in the settings, otherwise it won't look good. I'm going to add a displacement modifier on top of this and go to the texture settings where I'll add a new cloud texture. Then I just need to play with the scale on that until it looks good. The ice cube also gets just a basic simple glass texture. Now I can duplicate the ice a few times and move it around until it's in more natural positions. Now the scene as it is looks quite good. I'd be more than happy to hit render on this. But how about we play with a drastically different look, which we can achieve very easily. I'll select the lights that are in the scene right now, move them to their own collection and just disable it. Let's change this HDRI to something that's a little bit more appropriate for an outdoor scene. I'll add a sunlight into the scene. Now these are usually very dark by default, so I'm just going to crank up the strength, in this case to 20. Sunlights are neutral white light by default. I want to make this look like a very warm, sunny day, so let's enable the Use Nodes option for the sun lamp, and I'm going to add in a black body node, which I'll connect to the color. The black body node accurately replicates real colors that actually come from natural light sources like fire and the sun. Higher color temperatures over 6000 create a blue light, while lower temperatures create a more warm look. Now all I have to do is play with the angle of the sunlight to find some interesting shapes with the shadows. But to add a little bit of more visual interest to the light, we can also make a quick gobo. A gobo is basically an object which partially blocks light in order to create interesting shadows. We can make one very easily in Blender just by adding a plane above the scene. I'll add a noise texture to this plane and I'll plug that into the alpha channel of a principal shader via a color ramp. This breaks up the solid sunlight, making it look like clouds or tree cover are causing shadows on the scene. The ice cubes and the drink in general look a little bit dark to me right now. I can change this just by adding two extremely low strength point lights, one that's going to go right behind the glass, and one that's going to go just slightly off camera to the side. I can make the ice cubes really pop out by changing their reflectivity. This is easily accomplished by going into the glass shader and changing the IOR to a number that's higher than about two. So now we're in the final stretch. We've rendered this shot out and it's time for some simple compositing. First off, I'll add a blur node to the shot, which is something that I almost always do. CGI just looks too sharp. There isn't a real camera in the world that will ever be perfectly in focus. The two pixel blur is usually enough. Then I'll add a lens distortion node with the fit checkbox enabled. Increasing the dispersion amount at the bottom will create chromatic aberration. That's the sort of prism effect where you see a rainbow of colors on the edge of objects sometimes. It's just caused by uh, different wavelengths of light getting refracted slightly differently as they go into the lens. 
It's best to be subtle here. I never go above 0.02. Usually 0.01 or less is better. If you enable the jitter option, it's a great way to add some random grain and color to the image. To me, it looks very similar to the noisy artifacts that you see on digital cameras when you zoom in, especially in the shadow areas. Finally, I feel like the border area around this shot is just a little bit too bright and distracting. A vignette will bring the focus back to the center of the frame. I'll add the box mask node and I'll increase the size until it roughly matches the shape of the image. Then I'll use another blur node just to massively soften that up and blur everything out. I'll mix the original render with the color black and I will use the box mask that we just made as the factor. And there we have it. With about 20 minutes of extra work, we've took a render from this to this. Hopefully you've learned something from this video. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out the links in the description where you can save 20% on my new course, the Exterior Masterclass, with the promo code LAUNCH. There's also some really big discounts on my other courses. I'll leave those in the description too.